What's up, everybody? Welcome to a PlayStation Conversation. I'm Greg Miller, and this is the Pride of Long Island, Colin Moriarty. Be honest. Uh, Colin, yes. we love that their PlayStation. We yeah, love playing yeah. games on it. This like is a that. PlayStation. This it's is a, a PlayStation. PlayStation. Well, that doesn't matter for this, but, but we love PlayStation 3. We love playing old games on the PlayStation mm -hmm. 3. Good thing that'll never go away. Used games. Oh, yeah. Old games. Oh, no. Always going to be around. Yeah. Wait, no, wait. No. I'm getting told it's not no. always. It might not always oh, be around. Piece? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's very small. Oh, it's very Tell small. me about the news today here. All right, well, let me let me pick up the document here that yeah. I printed out. Uh, today on IGN, we posted a story, but we have to give proper credit to NeoGath member GoFreak, who is the one who kind of dug up this interesting patent that Sony has registered for. Um, and apparently they registered for it in early December of last year. I can say that now, last year. Yeah. 2012. 2012. 2013, 2013 now. Very yeah. exciting. And here's what our story says, just in short. So you'll probably see some text panning along the, over the video at this Hopefully. point. Hopefully. Yeah. If they're doing their job mm -hmm. over there. Um, it says, uh, Sony Computer Entertainment of Japan uh, created a patent w which will work by linking individual game disks to a user's account without requiring a network connection, meaning any future attempt to use this disk on another user's console won't work. The use permission tag uh, stores the terms of use of the game and determines whether a combination of the disk ID and the player ID conveyed from the reproduction device fulfills the terms of use or not. Okay, so that's a lot of mumbo jumbo. Mm -hmm. Basically, you buy a new game, you put it in your Orbis, we're assuming, mm -hmm. something along those mm -hmm. lines, and they bond. They bond with your user ID. Like they whatever. really like each other. Yeah, right? no, 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 no. Whoever you're logged in uh, is. You're logged in okay. as Game Over Greggy, you're logged in as Moriarty IGN. Uh, mm -hmm. The disc then bonds to that name, and if you went to GameStop, they'd be like, we can't take this. We can't take this because this disc is now bonded to one user profile. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting way around the used games deal that's you know a debacle at the moment. Indeed, indeed. I, I think that this is a multifaceted issue in, in in the sense that this is just a patent. Sony sure. undoubtedly has tens of thousands of patents that they have you no intention of ever using. You see these pop up on IGN mm -hmm. all the time, patents that these people, you remember this brick, this move controller that was just a monstrosity. Don't tempt, that, don't that, tempt fate, Greg. <laughs> Shuhei, if you're watching, don't make that move <laughs> controller. I am begging you. But there's all sorts of stuff that Sony files in. All these companies file. Mm -hmm. They patent things that you know they have the, the in on. Try to keep it up. This is an interesting one, though, because obviously, Use games cut into new games. If you're not familiar with this argument, the problem is that when you sell back a game to GameStop or any any retail for that matter, and they resell that used game, the publisher and the developer are not getting money. That's not being credited as a, as a new sale, so no one knows that that game sold. So maybe you know your game sells 100,000 copies at launch, but then people start just buying them used and used and used. You stagnate. You don't make money. This is a business. People need to make money to keep making games. Yeah, I I think that this is, you know is an issue that conflicts with what people would term consumer rights with. Uh, what you do with your product. You can sell your car, for instance, you can do all sorts of things, but I think um, the argument is going to be kind of dead soon anyway because we assume that the next PlayStation and the next Xbox will be the, the, the last disc uh, sure. based systems. And, and when you buy games digitally, um, even when you buy them now on PlayStation Network, for instance, um, you own them and they're tied to your name. And you can kind of do some workarounds if you really wanted to to get them to work on other names on your, on your console if you share a console with your brother or your sister or, or whatever. But um, those games are, are technically unable to be you know, sold. Yeah. Um, so. This seems like too little too late, but at the same time, like you said, Sony wants to just you know, get patents uh, just in case in the future they need, you know, they need to use them and everything's already set up and ready to go, which is what smart businesses do. What's scary to me is that you know, on the PlayStation 3 currently, for most games, Little Big Planet I think being the exception, you can't log in two PSN profiles and both earn trophies. So the madness of this locking it to one profile, I wonder if it actually worked. Because let's say you know, if we didn't li live together, even you know, I go from my bedroom to your bedroom to play video games, I log in as Game Over Greggy, I put in the disc, is it smart enough to be able to make that connection or is it really bonding to the system? That's what Yeah, I, I think about. it's probably going to bond to your name because uh, like you said, it's still within your rights even if you're against used game sales to bring a game over to your friends to play it. I don't think there's anything wrong with yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, remember when they launched SingStar and you're downloading Sing, you're downloading songs for SingStar, but they were locked to the console. Mm -hmm. That if you tried to do it anywhere else, there was this huge hullabaloo that you couldn't do. I mean, they're, granted, hopefully by the time this technology would be implemented, we're further along, we have new hardware, Sony has learned from online mistakes of the past, and we have a system that actually works, but yeah, who the I, hell knows? I don't know. I, I wouldn't be too worried about this, um, even if you're you know, ve vehemently for uh, used games, because I just don't think that it makes smart... Like, let's look at it this way, right? All right, let's do it. If, if Xbox doesn't do what Sony will do with, in terms of this with the next console, then that puts Sony at an inherent disadvantage. And right. Sony certainly knows that. Um, and since they can't really collude with Microsoft to 
both hey. say like we're going to both do the same thing, so we don't. Really we have a common businesses. enemy here: this used game market. Um, How are we going to get around it? I mean, there's no doubt that the used game market is extremely destructive um, to publishers and developers. Um, but at the same time, uh, the the rights of the consumer are powerful, and mm -hmm. so and that argument I think is powerful. Yeah. Um, so this is this is going to be a tough one. But don't get you know don't get all nervous about this because it's it's just it's just a rumor. Sony won't even talk about it. They never talk about rumors and speculation. They don't. They don't do the that. patent exists, but you know who knows what what's going to happen with it. Like Greg said, that monstrosity of a PlayStation Move DualShock hybrid controller, no, no, that will never happen. Hopefully not. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think of this patent? What do you think of the used games debate? Let us know in the comments below. Then make sure you keep coming back to IGN for all your PlayStation conversations.